Um, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Swedish Academy of Science and Nobel Committee for Physics for this prize. Of course, everybody understands that it is a great prize. And also, <laughs> I must stress that the work of the committee is extraordinarily uh, difficult. How to choose three men among many, <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> myself. All right, so about the prize. But I have also some other uh, remark connected with this prize. The point is that I have, uh, no, what it is teacher in case of the science is rather conditional, but I think that my teachers is Tam and Landau. These both influence me most and I was connected to them. So for me, it's quite important that they both received Nobel Prize. Tam in uh, 58 and Landau in 62. Unfortunately, he was ill already. It, it was great people and I am very, I glad that I, 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 I do not pretend that I am equal, but I, uh, I am glad that I follow their, their way, so to say. Now about the lecture. Uh, usually uh, such lectures, uh, you know this of course, it is devoted to achievement of uh, laureate and it is natural. But in my case, I would somehow violate this rule. In any case, partly I would follow this way, but not completely. Um, the point is that I begin to work in low temperature physics just 60 years ago, in 1943. We were in evacuation in Kazan. It was hunger, not starvation, but no food. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, water freeze in our room. And uh, I do not understand myself wh why I was so enthusiastic in low temperature <laughs> physics. P possibly due to this freezing of water, I don't know. But uh, speaking seriously, it was connected uh, with influence of Landau. He just, I would uh, say something later on, he just uh, uh, two years before uh, made uh, a theory of superfluidity, and I was influenced by this obstacle. But it is other question. So I began to work in '43. I work. I made several. Uh, I wrote several papers, but the main line was to de develop macroscopic theory of superconductivity. And slowly, I um, go uh, further and further. But the slowness is connected to the fact that I am theoretical physicist, and theoretical phys physicists are very happy indeed that they can change the field. So I work in many directions, and I work rather slowly. But in any case, in 1950, this uh, activity is culminated with the work by Landau and myself, which was mentioned here. And uh, this work is uh, developed by me and by other people, and it is now in textbooks. So I think that it would be boring if I would uh, in detail uh, speak about this theory. And also I wrote some paper uh, uh, in which I, uh, excuse me for my English, of course, in Russian I am much better speaker, but what to do? Uh, uh, and uh, I, I wrote a special review about how I developed this step by step, etc. So I would speak about this only in short terms, and the other part of the, my lecture, I would uh, speak about uh, other questions. Possibly it is the program, Guiana, aha, here. Um, so um, I would speak, I would, in sh second point, it is some remark about this. By the way, I do not use Ginsburg Landau theory. Not because I try to be modest, but simply in Russian language, 
to use your own name, it's something not good for me in any case. So I try, so I call it Psi theory of superconductivity. There are also other reasons. You see, I, with Pitayevsky and Sabianin, we developed also Psi theory of superfluidity. It is not so important as a Psi theory of superconductivity, but it is other co-authors, so to use Ginsburg Landau, it is, would be wrong in this case. So I would speak about Psi theory. All right. So I would speak about this Psi theory. And the third point is about high temperature superconductivity. In fact, beginning from 64, I, uh, uh, I work in, high, uh, I try to do something with high temperature superconductivity. Of course, I haven't uh, discovered high temperature superconductivity, but I claim that I have, have done with several people something in this direction. Now, the next point, thermoelectric effect in superconductor, it is absolutely curious thing. It is one of my first, first paper and first work done in 44. And I predicted several effects. And these effects not observed till now. I was, it was impossible for me to convince people to work in this interesting field. And uh, partly the same with super theory, psi theory, super fluidity. So I decided that it is this lecture, it is my last chance uh, to, <laughs> to try to convince people to do something in this direction. And I think it would be my last uh, contribution to physics, possibly, because I am old, and uh, it is no chances for me to do something. I, I, uh, I still working, but mainly uh, no, not in politics, but in uh, near, near science, I would say. For instance, convince that astrology is wrong, something like this. <laughs> All right, so I came now to the first, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know the audience, of course, people here understand many things, but I would like nevertheless to say a few words about history of uh, low temperature research. Not everybody remember. The liquid helium was obtained in 1908 by Kammerling Onnes and, and Leiden. But what is interesting, that 15 years liquid helium was uh, available only in Leiden. It is now impossible to simply to believe. During these 15 years, it was uh, 30 publications. Now 30 publications is two days. 30 publications, in, in, uh, for instance, superconductivity. So absolutely other world in this sense. All right, superconductivity was discovered in 1911 by Kammerling Onis and one of his assistant. And the uh, first, uh, first superconductor, it was Mercury. It is interesting why Mercury, but I have no time. And uh, it was supposed in the beginning that it is simply really superconductivity. So it is infinite conductivity. But uh, in 33, only in 33, Meissner found that it's not simply infinite conductivity, it's correct that it's infinite conductivity, but possibly most important is that it is ideal diamagnetic, and it is uh, superconductivity, superconducting state is phase in thermodynamic uh, meaning. All right, it is interesting also to compare the discovery of superconductivity with discovery of superfluidity. The beginning, by chance, was it the same 1911. In 1911, uh, Kammerling Onnes observed lambda point. Here is, no, you see uh, here on the blackboard. Here he observed rho. It is density. It is of course not real uh, picture. <laughs> it is not so <laughs> impressed peak. But uh, this peak in the density of liquid helium was observed in 1911, and then 27 years was needed to discover superfluidity. The main work was done by Kazem in Leiden. They observed lambda anomaly, super uh, thermoconductivity in 36, and, in, and only in uh, 1938, Kapitza, Allen, and Meisner also 
quite independently. Capizza, it is one part, and Allen and Meiser, and it is other in Cambridge. They discovered superfluidity. So it was needed 27 years to discover superfluidity. Why? And superconductivity was discovered by one stroke. Why? No, of course, the explanation is very simple, because superconductivity is a measure of resistance. Everybody, even in that time, was able to measure resistance. And to measure f flow of liquid helium through capillars or slits, it is very difficult. That is why. All right. Uh, what I, ha I have, of course, no time to speak in detail. I only would like to mention that London's, it is brothers, Fritz and Heinz, Heinz or I don't know his name, to London's, <coughs> propose in 35 a theory which, uh, um, uh, which explain or describe, if you like, a Meissner effect, and it was a very important step. All right, now I came <laughs> to our time, or my time, if you like. Uh, on April 28, 1639, Landau was freed from fr prison. He was in prison during one year. It is interesting, Capizzo was able to uh, take him on bail. He was uh, formally not freed, but uh, no, how to say, I don't know in English. In any case, out of the prison. And Landau himself told me that he was near death. He was dying, in fact, and uh, if he wasn't freed, not speaking about uh, that he can be shot or something like this, but he, he was, uh, his health was bad. In any case, he was freed in 39, and Capizza motivated by the way uh, that he, that he ha asked the government to free Landau, that he need him to explain superfluidity. And Landau really explained. In any case, you know this well-known theory by Landau. I was present at his first presentation of this theory. I don't remember in 1940 or 41. In any case, I would show you now the, this Landau, Landau, Landau paper published in 41 in English in our journal, just before the war. All right. So I was uh, influenced, of course, by this. This is real, not freezing of water in my room, but this was the real uh, beginning uh, of my activity in the field. But uh, the war began, etc. So only in '43 I really worked. All right. What the beginning of my uh, own or the beginning? It was not my. Own. Of course, you understand that. Uh, not uh, one, uh, I only one who was interested. Of course, at that time, possibly only very few people interested in low temperature physics, but nevertheless, there were some indications. In short term, I would say the following. The London theory, and I would speak about London theory later, <coughs> with the thermoelectric effect, so I would avoid now to explain what it is London theory. Uh, London theory is good, it explained Meissner effect, not penetration of magnetic field inside the superconductor. However, it was shown experimentally that London theory is not applicable if the magnetic field is near the critical field. Critical field is field which destroys superconductivity. London theory can be used and used till now in weak field in some conditions which I cannot now to describe. And what is more important, in London theory, the surface energy between normal and superconductive phase is negative. Of course, to stability of this uh, boundary, uh, the surface energy, energy must be positive. And it was not impossible. It, it is, uh, you must introduce extra surface energy to do something. So London theory was definitely not complete. And what is this Ginsburg-Landau or this Psi theory of superconductivity? It's just the phenomenological theory of superconductivity or quasi-phenomenological. Landau used uh, semi-phenomenological, he used this term. Is it just such theory which observe, uh, which describe the behavior of superconductors in magnetic fields? And it is 
um, in some sense, uh, uh, on the line, what, let us say, of general Landau theory of second order phase transition. I cannot explain in detail. In second order phase transition theory, the main quantity is order parameter. And the idea of our work is to use for the order parameter, psi function, something is as a root uh, from this uh, number of superconducting electrons. I would not elaborate. Uh, all right, next, please. Uh, yes, I will only show, I, I think that uh, Professor Abrikosov in his talk, I haven't seen uh, the talk, but definitely he would use this equation and possibly explain many things. And I only would say, uh, what it is. It is equations. You see this equation for this psi function, in the differential equation psi function. It is typical for the uh, second order phase transition term. It is typical for the kinetic energy in quantum mechanics, so to say. It is current, density of current uh, superconducting current. It is assumed here that there are no normal current. It is boundary conditions. I wouldn't come into detail. Here is the important thing. I, I wish about this theory to make only one remark, but interesting remark, I believe. In this theory, there are two parameters. <laughs> no, there are more, more parameters, but two important parameters. These parameters is this delta. It is simply the depth, penetration depth of magnetic field inside superconductor. And here, E, uh, uh, with cross, it is uh, charge, M with dot, I, how to call star. M with star is something like mass. Uh, please show the uh, f previous, previous, yes. You see, here it is enters M, and here it enters E. It is uh, like in quantum mechanics, mass and uh, charge of the, uh, of the, of the electron, for instance, you will speak about. All right. So the first, it is delta, it is penetration depth, and it is kappa. Uh, it is typical uh, parameter of this, uh, uh, of this uh, theory. And by the way, we, with Landau, uh, do, uh, using experimental data, have seen that for clean superconductors, uh, kappa is small, smaller than one. In fact, it is now, it here enters one divided by root of two. It is not so important, but we limited our investigation for small kappa. And we observed, nevertheless, that for kappa equal to uh, one over, uh, over two divided by two, Possibly I make a mistake, is my, I, I say that usually, I would uh, repeat, usually kappa is small, small in the sense that it is less or much less than one divided by root of two. But uh, if kappa is just equal to O7, O7, yes, the surface energy is zero. This is very important. Surface energy is positive for small kappa, and for large kappa it is negative. And just uh, uh, in large kappa it would be super superconductor of second kind, and Aprikosa was uh, would speak about. I am we limited, and I now would limit myself with superconductor of first type, uh, which for the small kappa. All right. But what, what the remark I would like, it seems to me it's an interesting thing, I would like to say, it is about M. You see, uh, the theory is like a, a quantum mechanic expression for kinetic energy, but what it is E? e are there reason to think that this E is a charge of electron? And we have disagreement with Landau. Landau I suppose that E is something effective charge. Because it is semi-phenomenological theory, it is no reason why this charge has to be charge of electron. Well, Landau disagreed. And as a compromise, I don't remember his the letters is small, as a compromise is in our paper, it was written that there are no reason to assume that E is not uh, charge of electron, something like this. All right. 
so it was published. And, but I, uh, after this, found how to, how to solve this problem. The solution is very simple. This kappa and so also E, you see this kappa is, uh, this kappa is, here it is uh, this E, and here it is depth penetration, de penetration depth, and it is a critical magnetic field. It is measurable, it is measurable, so we must measure somehow this E star. And it is possible because kappa enters to many things, to surface energy, to supercooling, superheating, etc. And I, analyzing the experimental data, come to the conclusion that E is not a charge of electron, but two or three times larger than the charge of electron. And I came to Landau, told him this, and now he, uh, he put forward the argument. Possibly he had this argument before, but when he wrote the paper, he don't, <laughs> don't say what this argument. Argument is the following. If E is effective charge, this E as effective mass in semiconductor, etc., this E can depend from uh, position because dependence from temperature, uh, concentration of uh, defects, etc. But if E is function of position, we violate the gradient invariance of the theory. It is something theoretical, possibly not understand by everybody, but it is unavoidable in, in, in theoretical physics uh, <laughs> that uh, it have to be gradient invariance theory. So, I published this, uh, of course, mentioning Landau with his permission, my arguments, his arguments, etc. And what is the solution? The solution is quite trivial and interesting. That is why I am saying this. The solution is that the, this E is not e, e star, is not E, but two E. Why? Because it is pairing after the bardin cooper schrieffer theory of superconductivity, microscopic theory, everybody knows that superconductivity is connected to its pairing. Two electrons make a pair, and charge of this pair is 2E. And that is, uh, 2E, uh, in fact, enters. And uh, Garkov was able, from bardin schrieffer cooper theory, to uh, he divide our, uh, this psi theory and, of course, we charge to E. So Landau was right that it is universal charge. And I also was right that it is not one by two. It is quite interesting, amusing, I would say, fact. And it is all I would like to say about this psi theory. It was many, many... I, uh, Landau was possibly too great to um, investigate in detail some superconducting effects. It, it was done by me and by some other people, so it is a uh, uh, very large field of solution, how it depends from field, from, uh, from current, etc., etc. I wouldn't enter into this. All right. Now, uh, when, when this psi theory was done, and also um, bardin cooper theory is done, it seems that the problem of superconductivity is solved. By the way, problem of superconductivity, uh, the problem arose in 1911, and solved finally, in some sense finally, because nothing is solved finally, but uh, in semi-finally, let us say, in uh, 57 with bardin cooper schrieffer theory. After this, superconductivity was not a, mm, not a secret. It is quite interesting that it is not question that it was no clever man who solved. Einstein, the greatest uh, personality, and Bohr also, you see, they both tried to explain superconductivity before, and unable. It, it, it was needed many things to explain, and it was done. I speak about microscopic theory only by Barton Cooper Schrieffer. But I must say also, not everybody knows that the idea of pairing, and people speak about Cooper pairs, uh, but uh, P Cooper was not the first. It was such a man, Oak, who in 40, even in 46, 
uh, put forward the idea of pairing. And after this, it was such a man, Schaffers, very good theoretical physicist who died in air crash. But in 54, he also proposed uh, this pairing. But Cooper, of course, it is not the case that Cooper only repeat. Cooper uh, really showed how pairing work in the case of Fermi uh, gas. So I, I, I do not say anything against Cooper. I only think only what wish to mention that this idea is not so. Uh, this idea have history. And I was personally blind, of course, and but Landau also was blind in the sense that we don't understood that we use, we need have these pairs and have this uh, two. All right. In uh, after this, after Bardin Cooper Schrieffer, I have done some work in superconductivity, but of course the interest failed. What the principle is clear and. Uh, of course, in every direction, it is possible to uh, make many things. Uh, the interest revived in '64 in connection, for me in any case, in connection with high temperature superconductivity. The point I would uh, I would uh, explain before something. You see, before Bardin Cooper Schrieffer, the question why superconductivity is observed only for low temperature was absolutely unclear. Bardin Cooper Schrieffer theory also explained clearly why the transitional temperature for superconductivity is small. It is clear for the simplest and most important, possibly, Bardin Cooper Schrieffer. Uh, please, uh, where it is your. I don't know. I, I need uh, the formula. Mm. It is 15. I need the formula for TC. Aha, uh -huh, yes. You see, this formula for, uh, for the uh, critical temperature of superconductor, it is theta. It is some temperature in which attraction takes place between electrons to make pairs. And, and it is uh, the, uh, how to say, uh, forget the word. Uh, uh, it is a measure of attraction in any case. Uh, all right. So from from this expression, it is very simple to see that uh, the typical t temperature of superconduct critical is less than 30 or something like that. Why? First of all, what is theta? Theta in bardin schiffer cooper theory, it is the by temperature of the solid because the attraction between electrons is due to exchange of phonons and the by temperature is highest temperature of this phonon. So it is, we know what it is, no, no, usually not more than 500 degrees. And this uh, constant is also, this formula is uh, correct only for small lambda. And uh, if lambda is uh, uh, normal in this case, you will immediately, of course, everything I, I am saying is written in my text of the lecture, but of course I cannot, uh, cannot uh, enter into any details here. Mm, uh, all right. So it is uh, easy to see that uh, the temperature is limited. And then the question arises, if it is possible to, uh, to increase the temperature, to have high temperature superconductor, I would define high temperature superconductor if critical temperature is higher than temperature of boiling point of nitrogen. It is uh, 77 degrees, and, uh, or even room temperature. This question, in my opinion, was put forward by Little, first of all, in 64. And thus, in 64, I followed him. Uh, Little proposed one dimensional model, and it, uh, as far as I understand, till now, do not work. And I propose a two dimensional model. It is layers. Uh, and. Uh, it, it is not the case that I would try to say that I discovered uh, a high temperature superconductor. But the fact is that in my work was proposed a two dimensional, quasi two dimensional situation and uh, exchange of electrical excitation, etc. And I have no time uh, to enter this. I only would like to say that here it is. Uh, 
it is our book uh, published in Russia in 77 and translated in 82. It, it is only one book about high temperature superconductivity published before the discovery of high temperature superconductivity. And I, it is a group of authors, and I think that it, uh, uh, it, it was in some sense important. Our main achievement, of course, I, uh, we haven't made high temperature. Our main achievements was, was the following. It, uh, quite serious theorists, and I do not criticize them, of course, because everybody can have their opinion, even wrong opinion. But there s several quite strong <laughs> theorists claim that it's impossible to have high temperature superconductor. Why? Because for appropriate uh, constant uh, uh, attraction, it w the, the lattice would be unstable. And we showed uh, mainly, it is mainly achievement by Kirchens, not myself, but all our group work in this, that uh, it is absolutely stable. And for the stability point of view, there are no uh, objection to have high temperature. All right, the only thing I would like to say, I, would, I hope that in my lecture you would found something interesting, but because I have no time, I would mention only one interesting thing. Uh, it is especially possible interest to young people. It is uh, supposed that to, op to obtain Nobel lecture now it is very, very difficult. And really it is, in most cases, difficulties, difficult if you have very gigantic installations, you have a lot of money, many people, etc. But sometimes Nobel Prize is obtained for very simple things. For instance, high temperature superconductivity was uh, in my opinion, it even not high temperature superconductivity, it's quasi high temperature superconductivity because it was only 35 degrees. But it is very important and done by Bednorz and Miller, and I'm fully in favor of them, <laughs> don't understand anything of this kind. Only uh, after uh, several months it was obtained 90 degrees by uh, Wu, Chu, and others. But this is uh, very simple. They use cuprates and observe in cuprates that the temperature is high. That is a simple demonstrated by the following thing. In 79, so seven, eight years earlier, a group of chemists in Moscow uh, built this same alloy. And uh, you, you can be sure that I wouldn't say this if it is not published. Uh, afterwards, everybody can claim that they have something. No, they have this specimen and publish this specimen. But once happened, they have no helium. Uh, and the critical temperature of this alloy, lantanum, cuprum, or chitiri, is uh, only 35 degrees. They put the specimen in liquid air even, but have no helium. I don't know why they have no helium. Possible, you know, there are such an expression about Russia. What is permanent in Russia, in old Russia, in Soviet Union? What is permanent? Temporary difficulties. Uh, so <laughs> it was te possible temporary difficulties with liquid helium, and <laughs> that is why uh, they don't observe. But it is interesting why I'm saying for the young people, it is important that they possibly can <laughs> made a room temperature superconductor, of <laughs> if it is possible at all, and you would receive the prize. All right, my opinion about room temperature superconductivity is a, it is a dream. Nobody knows if it is possible. Uh, like before 86, nobody knows that it is possible uh, to, to, build, uh, to build high temperature superconductivity, but the uh, question is open. It's very interesting, but I have no time to discuss. I, I hope that this is possible, I would say. Uh, all right. Now I have uh, the most interesting part of my talk you would read, I hope, because I have no time, but I nevertheless wish to say a few words about it. Uh, Meissner, well known, of course, and important contributor to 
superconductivity in 27, so you understand how many years ago, was the first who tried to observe thermoelectric effects in superconductors. And he observes that there are no thermoelectric effects in superconductors. And I hear quote Schoenberg, very good book, by the way, and it was published in 38, and I, of course, use this book, but uh, reprinted in 65. It is, I quote, many experiments have shown that all thermoelectric effects disappear in the superconducting state. So many years, and some not informed people till now think that there are no thermoelectric effects in thermoelectric, and it is wrong. And this was shown by, by my paper in, uh, uh, written in 43 and published in, uh, in 40, um, 44. Please uh, show these, and next it would be envelope of my book written in 44 and published in 46, also about superconductivity and about this effect. Now came back to, to, to no, next. Uh, where is the formula? Ah, yes. Now I would explain, I have no time, so I wouldn't possibly stress too much on the formula, but explain the situation. Why usually uh, thermoelectric effects not observed in superconductors? Because in superconductors, they're possible to have two currents, superconducting current and normal current. And show, please, the next slide with, uh, with uh, with the picture. Yes. So what happened? If it is normal state and you have a road and not closed, it is impossible to have any thermoelectric effect because uh, not closed circuit and uh, current is zero. But what it is in superconducting state? It is possible to have in one direction uh, normal current, in other direction superconducting current. So you have a row, superconducting road, no magnetic field, and this flow of current. By the way, because I have no time, it is quite interesting that even here, when you do not observe magnetic field or current, of course, it is something. It is thermoconductivity, some extra thermoconductivity connected with normal current. It is not cleared yet also this point, but uh, let us go further. Further, in this work, I obtained two cases when, nevertheless, no compensation of current. If superconductor is anisotropic or superconductor is not uniform, it is not complete uh, compensation of normal and superconducting current. There are two cases. First case, this. No, no, previous, please. It is first case. It is anisotropic crystal superconducting. If the uh, thermal gradient is not uh, parallel to axis of the crystals for in this direction, axis in this direction, in this case, a current flow around this plate. And this thing is not absurd yet. It is absolutely shameful, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> so many years, after 44, I was try. I convinced Fairbank, it was very good uh, experimental physicist, and uh, one, one experiment he done with his colleague Zeltzer, not, not very con convincing. Now, high temperature superconductor is strongly anisotropic. To observe this, it is some bochvillit, how can that in English, I don't know. Uh, the God uh, give you advice <laughs> to do this. It is not done. But uh, the uh, next which I was done, it is the following. It is here. It is one superconductor, other superconductor, uh, different, two different superconductors. But if you have here, uh, no, not constant, how to say, uh, no spy, uh, no, uh, no transition region between one and another. Then some current also take, and you would next. Oh, it is not. I was stupid enough. I suppose that this case and Lando also. Uh, we in that time thought that alloys is something dirty things. Uh, better not to uh, 
work with alloys. That is why I not pay attention, uh, too much attention to this previous case when you have two superconductors. But other people, it is Galperin who is uh, other team, and other it is Van Harlingen, who is, I don't remember the next author. They observed very simple thing, that if you have simple uh, circuit, one uh, and other, and uh, uh, in, uh, in more uh, uh, in more uh, symbolic way, it is one superconductor, other superconductor. It is the same as previous, but with the whole. In this case, it is easy to show that the magnetic flux, uh, it is also current, and the magnetic flux is uh, as this. It is uh, so-called so so um, quantum of magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is quantized in superconductors. And if K is zero, you have the previous case. So I, I simply observed already only five minutes, all right. It is very pity, but what to do? Uh, so uh, I, I finished with uh, these uh, uh, thermoelectric effects. My conclusion is that it's absolutely interesting, absolutely I don't understand what people, it is some fashion. In, in physics, in science, fashion is like in, in human skirts. Uh, uh, short, long, uh, in impossible to, uh, to explain sometimes why. But uh, it, 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 I believe that the same is here, and uh, I hope very much, and I would uh, to, uh, try to persuade people in Göteborg, and I also go to Helsinki, after this week, uh, and try to persuade them to do something. Now it is, this I finished, now permit me to show the three, my colleagues. Unfortunately, Kirchner died, he is, was extraordinarily good theoretical physicist, this is Zharkov, it is Maximov, I wouldn't elaborate. All right, now um, the next point is uh, in my presentation, it, Psi theory of superconductivity, but I have no time. I permit myself only to mention before one interesting effect. Please show this. Yes, it is in the circuit with superfluid. If it is uh, two weak links here, I would just, uh, I understand that I have only two minutes. Uh, uh, it is uh, um, such a circuit, if it is gradient of temperature, it is interesting circulation, this circulation is quantized. And about psi theory of superconductivity, I would say nothing. And I am finishing uh, only with a few words about, uh, 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 about um, this uh, uh, physical minimum. It is my <laughs> idea fix. During 30 years, I persuade physicists to have broad view on physics, and I uh, wished to propose, and it would be, of course, in the written version of my lecture, a list of 30 problems which every physicist much, must know something about uh, uh, to understand the physics. I am sharply against narrow approach to science and narrow approach to physics. Physics is beautiful, and you must know a broad, have a broad view on all physics, and it is possible, it is not difficult without details. Uh, and uh, I uh, would uh, have two lectures here in the, I don't remember one institute, how it's called, in Stockholm, and one in Uppsala, and there, then I would speak just about these new ideas. But now I have no time, thank you very much for your attention.